question is, Adam and Eve, will the moral order, will they learn to trust in God's love? Well, we know they did not, and this is why all of us sin still in our... Okay, so Adam and Eve, that's the first part of the tree. That's the first branch of our history. So now we can go to the next part of our history, because we're moving toward Jesus in our life, right? The next thing in history was that there was so much sin in the world, right? So much sin in the world that God said, I let people choose, but it's time to start over, right? We need something to cleanse the world of all the sin and save the righteous people. Now, there were only a few righteous people left in the world at this time that God said, I need to cleanse the world. So my question is, who was the one person who God said is still left, the one righteous person, and him and his family, I will save them? Who was no, that? No one. No one, exactly. Where are you at? So, the second ornament for our tree is the ark. It's the blood. It's, it's well, not the blood. It's the ark that represents. Exactly. It represents the sin. Okay, now, who said? You said no. You said no, right? So, you, you help me hang on. Okay. <laughs> here's, the, here's this one. Okay, I'll give you this one. Okay. I don't know how to hide it. Oh, I didn't put it. It's stuck to my finger. Okay. So what the ark is showing us is that the human family fell into such a big sin that it became so universal, that God was so troubled that the complete destruction of the human family had to begin. But God saw that there was a good man still in the world. It was Noah, just like you all said. So God told Noah to build the ark, right? To save Noah's family and the animals. God is very disappointed, was very pained by what humanity had done, but it's through his mercy that he saved Noah and the family. So again, what we're seeing here is how the whole story of Jesus comes through sin. If it's not for our sin, we wouldn't need the Savior, right? But that's where Jesus is coming from. And this is what I really hope when we're all finished here, what everybody is going to remember. Okay, so after the flood, more people came, people came to the world, and we moved into the era of our faith, which is called the era of the patriarchs. So we're still in Genesis, in the Bible, but we have the patriarchs, our very first fathers. And there was one man who sort of was the, we call him even today, he is sort of the, the one of the earliest figures of our church. The Jewish people call him the father, sort of one of the fathers of their church, right? And it was, oh, who is it? Who? I was going to explain more and give you more clues, but you already know exactly, right? Exactly. So Abraham was kind of the first, very good, Abraham. Excuse me, Abraham, okay, you come, you hang the next one. I'll give you the Abraham one. Come, come, come. Come, come. Yes, 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 it is. So, well, first I have to ask you. So, Abraham, of course, was very old, right? He didn't have any kids, but... Uh, God told him, you will have more descendants than there are, what? Stars in the sky, exactly. So, ornament number three is the stars in the sky. Very good. This represents Abraham. Okay. Sorry, it's not Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we make up the uh, stars onto our tree. That was the third step in the journey of faith. Abraham, he stood before God. He stood before the future. God promised Abraham and his wife. What was the name of his wife? Sarah. 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 Yeah, Sarah. Sarah. He told her that sorry was originally right. It was Abraham and sorry. Okay. Whoever said that, don't come soon. Hey, uh, uh, Abraham thought he was going to never have any kids, but of course God promised him more descendants, numerous as the stars in the sky. And all of us here today are descendants of Abraham. We are all coming from this line. We are one of the stars in the sky. Okay. So now we're moving away from the world of sin and moving into the story of salvation. Now, Abraham, as you know, he finally had a son. He had many children, actually, right? But he had one son, especially, right, who was sort of his beloved son. But if you remember what happened, God tested Abraham, right? He said, I'm going to test you to see, do you really love me? Do you really have trust in me? And so God said, I want you to sacrifice your son. What was the name of your son? Isaac. Isaac? Okay, come on, Isaac. You do the next one. Okay. <laughs> so, when it was time to sacrifice Isaac, God finally, the angel stopped him, right? 
angel said, okay, we don't have to sacrifice. So instead, they had another sacrifice, right? They sacrificed what? The, the lamb. The, the lamb or the goat, the ram, right? And that's, that's the next step. Uh, it represents Isaac. The, the, the sacrificial goat, exactly. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so God sent the angel with the message that Abraham must sacrifice his son Isaac. It was a very sad message, it was a very bitter message, but Abraham, he obeyed, he didn't even hesitate. He said, okay God, I will listen to you, this is what you want. Well, so different from Adam and Eve, right? He said, I don't care what you want, I do what I want. Abraham starts the cycle of redemption. He says, I'm willing to listen to you. So we're called to become like Abraham, to become like Isaac, to become like these people who are willing to listen to God, not those who are going to sin. Now, Isaac later, Abraham got old and he died. Isaac then had his own children, right? Now, Isaac had many children, again. He had, especially he had twins, he had boys, right, all of these. There was one son that was his favorite son. And he promised to his son that he will one day inherit the kingdom. He will become the father of many people. So here is your next question is, what is the name of the son of Isaac? Jacob, Jacob, right. Jacob and Esau, so right, exactly. But Esau was sort of, uh, how can you say? Yeah, Esau was more a uh, troublemaker, I think, right? Exactly. But Jacob was, 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 the, was the next one. Okay, now who said Jacob? Who wants to hang up the Jacob or not? Okay. Somebody has to help me out. Okay. You help me, thank you so much. Okay. You help me with the blue tag, because this is the, this is the most annoying thing. <laughs> but my question is, do you remember that Jacob had a dream about something? Do you remember this? What did Jacob have a dream about? Oh, you don't know this one. What was it? Well, family, but there was in his dream, he got to his, I'll tell you about the dream. He got in his dream, Jacob got to a certain place, and he, he rested there. And then he, he saw something in his dream, right? What was it? People were fighting, he fought with the angel, right? And, but before he fought with the angel, in his dream, he had to go up into heaven. Going up and down on the, on the ladder, right? That was, that's a, you're right, the story is right. So you're right, that's the point, is the ladder. The ladder was in the dream of Jacob. Yeah, I yeah. know, okay, help me. You said Jacob, so help me, please. <laughs> help me hang the ladder, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It will look pretty innocent. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So in his dream, the angel changed his name, Jacob's name. What was the new name of Jacob? Israel. Very cool. Oh my God. Very good. Very smart. That's right. That's right. So Jacob's name became, Jacob's name became Israel. Okay. So now we're moving on from Jacob. Now I said, Abraham had many children. No, don't show them yet. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Exactly. Uh, Abraham had many children. Isaac had many children. His child, Jacob, had many, many, many children, right? How many children do we know that Jacob had? About twelve. twelve, right? Twelve representing the twelve tribes of Israel, right? One of them was his favorite, right? Who was the favorite son of Jacob? Joseph. Oh, you didn't even find it. So the next ornament is everybody said so many so who had the one hey, 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 yeah. so many people say so you can hang the pole yeah yeah who did it who did it hang yes that's help me hang the pole so you're right Abraham I'm sorry Abraham had Isaac Isaac had Jacob Jacob had the twelve sons one of them the favorite one was Joseph and Joseph he falls in this line of Jesus right now you see, what's happening here is we're going back. And this is really the key, this is important, is that we started in a very sinful place. Our whole history of our church started from sin, Adam and Eve, to Noah, to complete destruction. And then it started to get better. Abraham, very holy, very, very holy thing. Isaac, okay, pretty holy. He did some things in the Bible, not so, not great. You know, he favored Jacob more than Esau. He, his mother tried to trick him. There's little things like this. Uh, and then we're, now we're getting into the story of Jacob and his sons, Joseph and, and Reuben, 
from him and all of them fall. Or they did some nasty thing. Now, Joseph was pretty good. Joseph did good things. But his brothers did not show nice, right? They captured Joseph. They threw him in the well. They sold him into slavery. So you see what's happening in our history. We're going back to this cycle of sin. And this is what happens in all of our lives, right? We do bad things. We go to confession. We have communion. We are good. We go back and we sin again. We fall into this cycle. Our whole life is just like the history of, 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 of the faith, okay? But you see, there is hope at the end. There is happiness at the end. Okay, now it's going to start getting a little more difficult because everybody knows these stories, right? But the next, the next story is eh, maybe not so, not so clear. So Joseph and his brothers sort of come to the 12 tribes of Israel. Joseph was sold into slavery in Egypt, right? Then for many, many years, all of the Israelites were slaves. It started from this point. They were slaves in Egypt. They had to work hard. They had to toil in building bricks and building things for the Pharaoh and all of his people. Yeah, and you see what happens when we sin. It causes pain. It causes suffering, just like it did for these early ancestors of Jesus. So the people were in slavery for many, many years until somebody came and God said, I want you to help me free my people. And who was the person who God called to free the Israelites? Out Moses. Of yes. It was Moses, very good, right? And how did God tell Moses, I want you to be the one? What did God use to speak to Moses? The fire. Uh, uh, uh. That's right. So the next ornament is the burning bush of Moses, right? Exactly. Okay, who wants, who wants to help me hang burning bush? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> exactly. So the next step in the history of our salvation comes in the form of the burning bush of Moses. As you see, God told Moses, I will show you mercy. You are the one who I want you to do. And Moses said, I am not worthy, right? Moses had some problems speaking. He was not a very good speaker. He would stutter right when he talked. This is what we think anyways. So his brother Aaron went and helped him. But this is important too. Sometimes we feel like, oh, maybe we are not good speakers. We are not good preachers when our where's my evangelization group right when you're doing your work uh, catechism you think oh maybe i'm not smart enough maybe i don't know enough things it's okay god will give you the words okay the holy spirit will come and will help you so don't ever feel like you're not good enough god will give you the words just like he gave to Moses. so as god began to free the israelites and moses eventually was able to convince pharaoh to let them go for the second time now in our history we are seeing something happen where people are being destroyed, where the sinners are suffering punishment. God told the people, he told Moses, he said, we're going to let your people free, but there's going to be some plagues that are going to happen. And many people are going to die. But the way to save yourself is to put something on your door, right? You remember the story? Yes. And what, what did the people have to do to save themselves? The blood, the blood of the lamb, right? Exactly, exactly. So the people who had the blood of the lamb on the door were safe. The people who didn't have the blood on the door were killed by the angel of death, is what it's called. So again, we see this cycle. If you're willing to say yes to God, God will save you. If you say no to God, God will not force you to listen to him. If you want to die, you can die. You can choose death if you want. But people, thankfully, they put the blood of the Lamb on their door, and they were willing to be saved. And so the next step in our salvation, the next ornament is the Lamb, which represents the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the people that were saved by Moses' uh, uh, intercession. Now, what do we call, what is this holiday? What do the Jewish people call this day? Passover. Passover, right? Exactly. Okay. So, who, who, who is my Passover? You can make that. <laughs> come, 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 come. I heard you. I lied. I lied. <laughs> you hang the lamp to every time Okay. Right now, thank you. So, after the, after the people were freed, all of a sudden they're in. So, this is like the third time, basically, God has remade the world. First time, Adam and Eve. That didn't work. <laughs> because the people were, were not so nice. Then Noah, that was the second time. That really didn't work. They turned into slaves. So now the third time, God is making a new people, the Israelite people. And he said, 
I'm going to give you some rules. I'm going to teach you because your fathers and mothers, Adam and Eve, didn't listen to me. Noah, his family, they listened to me, but then they fell into sin. So I'm going to give you some new direction how to live in your world. And he gave to Moses some rules for the people how to live, and he established the kingdom, right? And I'll give you a, I'll give you a clue. There's ten of them, right? So what are the rules that God gave to Israelites? We call them the ten what? <laughs> commandments, right? There. So that is our next ornament. It is the ten commandments. It is the symbol. So when Moses and Aaron went up to the mountain, Mount Sinai, God reminded them of what he did for them. He said, I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And he told them what they need to do to have a good relationship with God. The Ten Commandments. That's, we still have these today. These are still the rules for us in our church. If we want to have a good relationship with God, all we have to do is read the Ten Commandments, okay? So even during this Advent period, if you feel very down, you feel very lonely, you feel you don't know how to connect with God, keep it. Look through the Ten Commandments. Do you keep God as number one in your life? Do you go to church every Sunday? Do you honor your parents? Do you have you killed, not maybe literally killed somebody, but with your words or with your actions? Have you stolen something? Have you told a lie? Are you jealous of somebody? These are all things the Ten Commandments remind us of. And if we obey those rules, we're going to have a very happy Advent, okay? So if you ever feel despair, I don't know what to do, go through the Ten Commandments, let them examine your conscience, okay, and remember what to do. So after Moses uh, uh, got the Ten Commandments, the next step in the salvation plan was to give the people of Israel, which are our ancestors, their own place to live. And so he sent them to a city, and eventually the Promised Land, right, which he called the Promised Land, and he said, once you make this will be your home. Now, was a, the promised land was a place called Canaan, was the land. And there was a city in Canaan called, uh, what was it? It had walls all around it. They marched around the walls. Seven times they went around the city. Exactly, that's right. It's Jericho, exactly. So Jericho was the promised land. So you hear about the Israelites going through the promised land. It was a place called Jericho. And as, actually, I already need the answer away. I was going to ask you, how did they get into Jericho? Well, the way they got into Jericho was by uh, uh, marching around the city. It was by, um, it was by blowing the horn of the trumpet. And eventually they, they, they were able to knock the wall down. So that's the next, that's the next uh, 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 ornament on the tree, is the horn, which represents the horn of Jericho. I'm going to walk over it. The pots, or maybe you the clay, the jars of clay, right? These kind of things. That comes from Gideon. So that's the next teaching sign. So that, so that's actually when I was coming down across it. Okay, God said, I'm going to help you hide all of your tools and your feet inside of these pots. And I will show you. Okay, so who wants to help me hang the pot that shows God's, God's uh, defending you? Yeah. Thank you. So, now the next story we get to in our Bible is about a woman, okay? Now there are some books in the Bible named after women, right? There is uh, uh, not so many, but there is one especially that many people know, I think. Uh, she was a woman who she remained very faithful to God all of her life. She lived in this land, in this land of Canaan. She listened to God. Uh, she respected her parents, especially her mother-in-law, right? Her mother-in-law was called Naomi. Naomi was very troubled because nobody would protect her, but she put her trust in God. And so, again, this shows us that so far we're talking about lots of men, right? Lots of men, Abraham, Isaac, and David, but also there are good women in the line of Jesus, too. And one of them is who? I heard you say. Ruth. Ruth. That's right, Ruth. Okay, thank you. Oh, wait, I forgot to you. So, Ruth, we're representing Ruth with the, the grain, the wheat, because if you remember the story of Ruth, when she and her mother in law, they only they fled, they slept in the grain, right? They slept in the field of grain. And so, grain represents the next bit of our story, which is the story of Ruth, which shows us that even, please, in music, that even, even good women play a good part in the history of our race. So, there you go. So, this is the faithfulness of Ruth. Ruth was faithful, Ruth was willing to listen to God, and as a result, she was able to. Uh, we say to become part of our story. Now, up to this point, the people.
people, the people already had many leaders. They had different governors that were leading their land. But the people said, we want to have a king. They said, we want to have a king, right? God said, I don't want to give you a king. But the people said, we want to have a king to rule us. And again, we're going, now we're going back into sin again. So we were going from sin to good, sin to good, sin to good. Now back to sin again. The people said, we want a king. And so God said, if you want a king, you can have a king. And the king turned out not to be a very good person. But who did they choose? Who was the first king of Israel? Very good. Yes, Tom, yes. Saul is the first king. Okay, you have to come with the name because you're so smart. That's right. That's right. Samuel told Saul that he's going to be the man who's going to be the one to become the leader. Samuel is the prophet. And he said, Saul, you are the one who's going to be the king. Now, like I said, it turned out Saul was the king and he wasn't very good. Saul was not a very good king because he was very jealous, right? So remember again, I said, we go, our whole story goes from good to bad, good to bad, good to bad. So if our life are doing the same thing, we are no different from all of these people in our history. Saul, Samuel, good person. Saul, not so good. Saul was not a good king because he was very jealous, right? And he was very jealous, especially of a young boy, right? Who was very, he was very scared of this young boy. People liked this young boy. But people, but Saul was very scared. He even wanted to kill this young boy. The young boy had the chance to kill him. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. Who was the young boy? Saul was scared of him. Oh, yes, of course, uh, You're so smart, right? Oh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to give you the next, the next word of the person David. Now, David was very good at, he killed Goliath, of course, right? He also liked to play music, right? You know, he played the harp for the king. That's one of the reasons why his daughter, the, the daughter of the king was. So the, the, the ornament of David is the harp. It represents the music that David would play. So, you know, he always teaches music. Oh, <laughs> Thank you for helping me. <laughs> Our tree is almost finished. It's like we're almost there. After David came another prophet, a prophet who confronted the people. He went into the enemy territory. He went and told Jezebel, the evil queen, so now we're still in that, there was somebody good who came up and he said, there's going to be somebody who's going to be, well, we're going to call him, his nickname was the Troubler of Israel, the Troublemaker of Israel. He was a prophet, and he's one of the most famous prophets who predicted, you guys are all being so bad. Something, something is going to happen to you if you don't turn around and be good. You're going back. Remember what happened with Noah? Remember what happened with Adam and Eve? It's going to happen to you unless you turn around. Who was the prophet who started to really warn the people? Not Nathan. Well, Nathan was with David, but a little bit later after Nathan. I heard, I heard somebody over here say, not, not Isaiah. Yes, good. Okay, next slide. Yes, thank you. Okay, who said Elijah? You have to thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was over here someplace, not up. Go up one more time. Go back. Thank you. No, wait a minute. Go back. No, go back. She's too many. Go back. Okay. We can keep going now because you saw the next one, right? Elijah was the first prophet of many, many prophets. But just like you said, there were many, many more prophets who came after uh, Elijah. And Elijah was the first one who said, oh boy, you all really have to start being good people, otherwise bad stuff is going to happen. So after Elijah, okay, you can go to the next one, maybe. After Elijah, another, another one, yeah. there was another one, it was Hezekiah, right? There's a book in the Bible. And if you read the story, it's pretty interesting, where it's talking about, uh, there was a, a, another bad man, his name was Ahaz. He did lots of bad things. And so Hezekiah went to his tent and he said, you have to change yourself up. So the, the story of Hezekiah is represented by the tent. Okay? So we can think of Who wants to help me hang up the tent? Represent, we're still representing the prophets, the warning. Everybody who hangs up the ornament, you get a special blessing. Who remember that? So. <laughs> okay, so there was he was one prophet, and then after Hezekiah came another prophet. We can go to the next one. Isaiah, who you all mentioned before. Now, the, the, the ornament of Isaiah is the, the hot pole. Why, why is the hot pole the ornament for Isaiah? Do you know? Do you know the story? <laughs> you learn, you learn, no. okay. It's because of 
because one of the angels, this is how Isaiah, we know. We do. Yes, exactly. The put so you have to make now. <laughs> exactly. So the you, you know there are so many books from Isaiah. We read the readers will be reading this every week in Advent. But Isaiah at first was not a prophet. He just was a normal person. But then again, one of the story says that one of the angels took some hot coal from the ground, put it onto his tongue, and after that he began to speak in prophecies. So angels are playing a big part. That's why the symbol of Isaiah is the high coal because it represents the call to holiness of Isaiah. Now, let's see, we are, we're still going through our uh, prophets, okay? So the next one, we can go to the next one. The next prophet after Isaiah is? Yeah. Jeremiah. Have you heard of Jeremiah before? Yes, you've heard of him? Now, he is represented in our history, and the ornament is the tears. Why do you say the tears? Do you know why? People are thinking bad things. People are thinking bad things, right. Now, this is very important for us, even for myself, too. Again, this is going to be another thing. I, I already gave you one advice. I said, during Advent, if you really want to help the holiness, to read the Ten Commandments, right? And really pray about them. If you want to maybe something else you can do for Advent, read the story of Jeremiah in the Bible. It's very, very, very good. Because at this time, as we say, we're getting people are being buried back now. They're getting to that bad place again. Especially towards the women especially for the migrants, the immigrants, and for the orphans. Jeremiah really is the prophet, and he says, oh, yeah, let me say that. That he really, really prayed for the people and tried to stop them and warn them, you are being mean to the immigrants. You are being mean to the migrants. Many of us here are immigrants. I'm an immigrant to this place, right? And so, even myself, when I feel bad, when I feel like somebody tells me, oh, Father, you're Chinese, not so good as your players, I think about Jeremiah. I say, you know what, even in our history, people have been mean to visitors to my throughout many, many of our lives. So the tears represent the tears of the migrants, of the orphans and the widows and those who are sad. And so, um, you this, this, this is a special one, so I Do your special one, you need to thank the, the, the representative of migrants, that's right. Thank you so much. Now, we're going to another, we're going to another prophet. So we're moving from people that are still, they still aren't listening. They didn't listen to Isaiah. They didn't listen to uh, Ezekiel. They didn't listen to Hezekiah. So another prophet came. And next one? His name was? <laughs> Habakkuk. Right, Habakkuk was another prophet. Right. Now, he, his story in the Bible is kind of, it's, it's very long. But it's talking about God's plan. And then Habakkuk didn't know what was going on. So if you ever feel very confused in your life, you ever don't know what is going on, read the story of Habakkuk because he also didn't know what was going on. He said, God, nobody wants to listen to me. Sometimes I feel like this way. Sometimes when I am giving my homily during the Mass, you know, I'm standing there so I can see everybody. I can tell sometimes they're sleeping, sometimes they're looking this way. You know, it's normal, right? So then I think, well, Habakkuk, okay, the people didn't want to listen to you either. They don't want to listen to me. They'd rather fall asleep. So I think, ah, maybe I'm like, this way. But it's the reality. Sometimes we talk to people this and they don't listen, they realize they want to say. So maybe I don't think I'm Sometimes I think like this. He's represented by the stone tower. Uh, he's represented by the stone tower because uh, he, he predicted the fall of the city, the fall of Judah. So how about the here? So I'm going to say, yeah. All right. Okay, we can go to the next prophet now, the next book in the Bible. Is somebody called? Nehemiah, right? Nehemiah. Nehemiah is the wall of the temple, wall of the city, because Nehemiah was the governor of the city. He was given permission to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Even now today, has anybody ever been to like Holy Land, Israel? I've never been. I never been myself. No. You've been to it, my dream too. I know. I would love to go to Israel one day. I would love to go to Israel one day. But it, I heard, I've never been there, but I've seen pictures, that Israel, uh, Jerusalem, has some walls around the city. I've heard sometimes even people can write some prayer and put them inside the wall. Maybe you've heard of this one. These walls are very, very, very old. So who is the one who built the walls? Well, it was Nehemiah, okay? So this is interesting for us. So who can help me hang the walls of Nehemiah? <laughs> Thank you so much. So we're still going through the prophet stories. Okay. Okay, so finally we're moving on from, uh, moving away from, Nehemiah was pretty much the last prophet. It's one of the last books in the Old Testament. 
Now we move into the New Testament. So we're getting close to Jesus now, right? <laughs> Nehemiah is toward the end of the prophet. Now there's a new prophet who's coming. And this new prophet is telling people the Messiah is coming, just like Isaiah told you, just like Ezekiel told you. But he's coming very, very, very soon. Very, very, very soon. And in fact, you have to be ready. And so this prophet actually was related to Jesus. Actually, of course, many people are. He lived out in the wilderness. He ate honey. He ate bugs and locusts. Who is it? And Jesus is coming soon. So we're getting into more modern times. He's represented by the shell. Because John the Baptist is the one who baptized Jesus. And you know, when we have our baptism, I don't know about this parish, but in Chingy, we use the shell for the baptism, representing the leader, that actual shell. Even when I went home to the U.S., I got to do the baptism for my young niece. I use the shell also. It represents the way uh, John the Baptist in the, in the river, in the river, back in Jordan River. Who's 
birthday that we celebrate our Christmas. <laughs> Very hard question. <laughs> so we have the main here to Very special. Very special. This is super special.